my name is Mike M0 MSN and I thought I'd make this video just uh, just quickly because I've had a few comments on uh, a few of the videos I've made and also a few emails directly asking why they're getting a uh, reading of a short circuit with an NFED half wave. So I thought I would uh, go through the build of an NFED half wave for you. Uh, and show you why you're getting a short uh, on DC. Uh, now, it will uh, be a short circuit if you test it with a meter um, because uh, it is a DC short. It's as simple as that, really. Um, but it won't be a short to AC. Let me show you a built one, and then I shall draw the circuit diagram for you, and then you'll understand, hopefully, uh, why it represents a short and why it also works as a transformer um for an NFED half wave anyway okay let me quickly draw you the circuit diagram for a coupled and a tapped uh, NFED half wave 49 to 1. so what you have at the um is your core random thing uh, what you have here is your two turns it's actually closer to three but that will do and on that side you have your 14 turns. Right, that one will go to the antenna. This will go to earth or the chassis. This would go to earth or the chassis. And that would go to the center of your coax. So the way the coax is, is connected here, you've got your coax coming in and your center core and your bit of braid. Okay, your braid would be connected to the earth here, which is the same as connecting to that one, and the center core would be connected to that side. And although it's not shown on the diagram, but these two would actually be wound around each other. So it would be a twisted pair, if you like. So to draw it again, you have the first two turns, okay, and then the rest go up here, 14 or so up there. And what you would do, you would have um, this going round, and they would be twisted. Okay, so the first two turns would be coupled, uh, and this would go to the outside core, if you like, the shield, and this would then go to the center core. And if you noticed, what you've basically got is this coil wrapped around the first bit, and if you like, inside that would be your, your ferrite um, coil, okay? So that's a coupled version. Now, the tapped version is uh, very similar to that circuit diagram, but what you've actually got is the core coming in. Two, three, four, five, six, seven, and so on to 14. Um, and what you've got is the ground, or if you like, let's... Uh, Draw a bit of coax. That's the, and then we've got this coming in. That's the center core. Uh, we've got the braid. The braid is connected to the bottom of the coil, and then two turns up, you tap with the center core. And that, in reality, gives you two turns plus another uh, 12. Uh, but all of it, in total, it's a 14 turn coil, uh, which two to 14, two divided by 14, seven, seven times seven is 49. So you've got a 49 to one transformer or balloon. Okay, so this is what we're going to make. This is the one that I've made. It's a tapped, um, a tapped second turn uh, toroid, uh, 49 to one, because uh, at the end of the day, it acts in exactly the same way as the coupled version. 
uh, but it saves me a bit of uh, copper. <laughs> actually, I find that this um, actually works better than the coupled one. I don't know why, but it does. Um, okay, so that's what I have built. So here we are. Here is a 49 to 1 um, transformer for a N-fed half wave. Um, it's not a random length. It definitely has to be a half wave on the lowest frequency that you want to use. In other words, if you want to use this on the 80 meter band, 40 meter band, 20 meter band, and so on, the, the antenna needs to be 40 meters in length. Okay, it's half of the lowest band. So that'd be half of 80 meters, which would be 40 meters. Yeah, you know, simple maths. Right, how it works. This is not a, a coupled twin turn. This is a tapped um, second turn um, version. Um, you don't actually need to put a coupling in. You can simply tap the second uh, turn and this particular one if I can get it in focus is as you can see soldered on the second turn and that goes directly to the center pin of the SO239 uh, and it has 14 turns one two three four five six seven eight 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14. And the 14th turn then comes out and directly to the start of the NFED. Okay. Um, now, the beginning or the first two turns um, are actually backwards from the, from, from the SO239 center. So it actually starts two turns in, and therefore the two turns actually go back to the shield. And then I've put another tap in to allow for a, a counterpoise or a ground stake. It's up to you. You can use both. You could use a ground stake and a counterpoise on this, should you so wish. So the reason you get a DC short is because the centre court is connected to the braid if you like, by two turns around the toroids, okay? So you've got 14 turns in total. So you divide 14 by two, because you've got two, two of the tapped, that gives you seven. Seven times seven is 49. So you have a 49 to one. So if I put 49 ohms in at the top, I get one ohm at the bottom. And in this case, it would be 2,800 ohms going in from the end of the uh, end fed uh, and it will come out as around 50 ohms on the center core of my coax which was what we want to see the capacitor is in there um, to give um, if you like the higher bands um, a pseudo extra length we have to have um, a little bit more capacity in the lower bands and of course it doesn't make any difference in the higher bands because the, the value is too small uh, but on the a 10 meter band, this capacitor adds probably five or six centimeters, maybe a bit more to the length of the 10 meter bit. You don't have to have this capacitor. You can put a compensation coil at the end of the, of the 10 meter point, uh, if you like, which would be five meters up the uh, half wave uh, N feds length. And you could put a compensation coil in there um, which is five or six turns uh, around a 50 um, millimeter diameter um, uh, core. And that will do exactly the same job as the capacitor. The beauty of the capacitor is you don't have to mess around with the antenna. You can just throw out a length. Right, so to end with then, we'll just quickly throw it on a uh, VNA uh, and on the 40 meter, sorry, 80 meter, no, 40 meter band, we have an SWR, lowest is 1.17. Um, on the 80 meter band, our lowest SWR seems to be around 1 1.3, 1 1.4. Uh, 
um, slightly out of band there, uh, slightly too long, or oh, sorry, too short. And on 20 metres, we are 1.07. Well, that's pretty good. Um, and finally, on 10 metres, we are looking at uh, 1.07 again. Ah, that's all good stuff. Well, that's it. Thank you very much for uh, for watching the video. I hope this has uh, helped you understand um, NFED halfways and why we use them. Cheers for now. Thanks. Bye-bye.